This is a quick drone tutorial on follow me mode. This is using a quadcopter with an APM flight controller and you can see it has the GPS mounted on top and the quadcopter is capable of very good loiter mode so make sure everything's working fine in loiter mode before you attempt follow me mode. Okay, so the next step in the process is you need a ground control station that the drone can follow. I'm just using Mission Planner here. And the key thing in this is your ground control station needs to know where it is, therefore it needs a GPS uh, input to the ground control station. I'm going to show you a couple of options for uh, GPS for the ground station. I have here, uh, this is no longer made, but uh, we use it for water skiing. It's a GPS speedometer, it's a heads up display, it's a global top HG100, but basically any Bluetooth uh, compatible GPS unit will work. Um, the other one you can use is a USB connected GPS module. Now, Here's the same kind of GPS module that you use in a drone. I was going to go out and I was going to buy a, a USB GPS module, but I thought, okay, wait a sec, what, what is a USB GPS module? It's just the same thing that we have on the drone, hooked up to a USB port, and that is done just through a simple um, RS-232 uh, USB to uh, TTL converter, FTD-232 sort of thing. Uh, I think this might be a CP-2303. Um, and it's just a USB to TTL and then I've just got it wired right into the uh, GPS module and you can see we've got blue flash which is pretty amazing we've got uh, GPS lock we've got GPS lock on both units here and I'm in a basement GPS units are amazing these days they can get a signal in a basement now in order to get the GPS signal whether it's Bluetooth or whether it's the USB connected device um, they emulate a COM port and the key is you need to know the communication parameters of your GPS and you need to make sure that it's giving you a proper signal. That was where I stumbled horribly. I'm going to use open source PuTTY to check this. So in PuTTY I have just set up a serial connection and I've got it on COM port 7 at 9600 baud. Why did I choose COM port 7? Well when I plugged in my um, CP2303 USB device COM7 showed up as one of the options in uh, Mission Planner. 9600 baud is a very common baud rate for GPS units. You may have to try a few different baud rates like 4800, 9600, 38400 depending on what you're doing um, until you find one that works. And here's what you get when you are connected at the right baud rate. You can see it's updating at about 1 Hz one time, one update per second, and it's just a bunch of what we call NMEA sentences describing the satellite positions. I have a lock here, and so these are good filled up sentences. If you're first communicating with your GPS module and you don't have satellites in view yet, no lock yet, you'll still get the sentences, but everything will be blank. There will just be a whole series of commas there. But at least you know now that you're at the right baud rate and the right communication port. Just to show you what happens if you're at the wrong baud rate, I'm going to open the putty session. This time I'm at 4800 baud, and you can see I end up with garbage on the screen. That's okay. I know it. I'm on the right communication port, so that's a good start. And I'm getting value, so I just have to try it and just close the putty session, reopen it again, and try a different baud rate until I find the right one. Here we are at 9600 baud. Open my session. We're good. COM7 9600 baud. That works for the CP2303 connected USB uh, GPS unit. Okay, once you have a known hooked up working GPS unit, you can go back into Mission Planner at this point, and the key is a magic key sequence, Control F in the flight data, brings up a special window, and one of the options in there is Follow Me. So I'm going to go up to Follow Me, and this brings up a dialog box for your GPS, for the 
ground station GPS. And all you have to do there is choose your COM port, choose your baud rate, which we determined in PuTTY to be 9600 baud. And we know that it updates. Our GPS gives us updates at 1 hertz. And when we connect, it prompts us for what our altitude will be. How high up do you want the follow me to be? And it's by default 10 meters. I'm choosing that and you can see I am now connected and I am getting a good and changing signal. Shows you the HDOP, it's pretty high, as I said, in the basement. So five satellites, high HDOP, that's acceptable. And now we're ready to go out outside with the drone and try a follow me. This is typically what you get if you connect without with an incorrect baud rate or if the communication is not happening properly with your GPS unit. You see the uh, coordinate 0, 0, 0 just stays there. You never get valid uh, uh, latitude and longitude information out of the, uh, the GPS. And back to the rate communication parameter. And as soon as you connect, you get some valid information from the satellite. Just to show you another place where things can possibly go wrong, I actually have two GPS units here that are identical. Um, the second one I was fooling around with another project, and so I have the baud rate set to 4800 on this one. And I will connect to it, and you can see, oops, a little focus issue, there we go. So there's what comes out of this GPS unit. Um, I don't have lock yet but you can see I actually have it configured to do just one particular NMEA sentence, the GPRMC NMEA sentence. And so it turns out, well that may be enough for the other device that I was working with, this is not enough information out of the uh, GPS unit for Mission Planner to uh, do follow me mode and I'll show you in a second. Here's the NMEA sentence when the GPS actually has a valid 3D lock. Now, so there we are at 4800 baud with all the proper information or all the information that the GPS is outputting. That isn't enough for Mission Planner. Here we are in Mission Planner connecting to that same GPS, 4800 baud, exactly the way it's set. I connect. You get the Altitude query, you say OK. It is now connected. And you'll notice just does the same thing as if the baud rate is wrong. It's not getting the proper information from the GPS unit that it needs in the NMEA sentences, and you don't get any update. Here's the other GPS module, and you can see a whole different set of NMEA sentences that are output by this and that has a 3D lock now so you can actually see what those sentences are and that's one of those is what the mission planner is looking for. Connecting, set the altitude and we immediately have data now that I'm using the second module at 9600 baud with the proper NMEA sentences. Okay, let's go back and use a different kind of GPS rather than the USB connected one. Let's use a Bluetooth GPS. That's the global top heads up display that I have there. And I'm using the Bluetooth manager and when I you can see that I have it paired. And if I go into more Bluetooth options, and look at COM ports. That's how we find out what COM port the global top is on. Um, the heads-up GPS. Now for some reason this one uses two um, COM ports, COM8 and COM9. As it turns out the outgoing is the one that we need to use um, in Mission Planner. So here we are back in Mission Planner. I use the follow me, it brings up the 
GPS communication and in this case I use COM9 and I just happen to know, you can go by trial and error, but I happen to know that this Bluetooth display uses 38400 and it does at least 5 Hz update so I'm using a 2 Hz update which is the highest one that Mission Planner seems to support I connect get my altitude setting and as soon as I do I start to get data from my Bluetooth GPS and once I have that running then either either using the Bluetooth GPS or the USB GPS Mission Planner now has information as to where it's located the next step is to put the drone into loiter mode and tell it to follow me and at whatever position it is it will start following that distance away at this point when you have your drone hovering in the air in loiter mode and you click connect you'll immediately get prompted for the altitude I'm entering 25 meters and I'm clicking OK and at this point your drone will now move immediately over top of you 25 meters up in the air so make sure that wherever you're standing the skyline between where the drone is and over top of you is clear and now that the drone is hovering over top of you at the 25 meter altitude go for a walk take your laptop go walk about and watch your drone follow you and it'll just stay over top of you 25 meters over your head okay we are ready for the flight test we have the drone sitting on the ground disarmed right now ready to go yeah it's winter here and it's a pretty windy day actually so arming it warning low altitude zero arm warning low altitude minus one mode change to loiter Warning. So I'm in low loiter mode now. Zero. Warning. Low altitude. And there we are, just loitering in the wind. And now, while it's loitering, I'm going to connect. As for the altitude, I'm going for 25 meters. Mode change to guide. And it has gone over top and gone up to 25 meters altitude. And now I'm going for a walk. And the drone, while I walk, yeah, I will just walk backwards. There we go. And as I walk, it just follows me. When you're done, just press stop. And that puts it back in guided mode. It leaves it in guided mode, but not in follow me mode.